we need to be as a country. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I call Joanne Hayes. Tēnāwhi, Madam Speaker. And I stand to take a call on this um, important bill. It should be a very important bill for this country, but unfortunately, um, Madam Speaker, I, I find it very difficult to actually support um, the third reading of the bill. Before I get um, into my speech, I just want to acknowledge the Honourable Anne Tolley for the work that she did in getting the bill through to its first reading, the hard work around the rewrite. It was a 1964 bill, Social Security Act, and it needed some changes. There was um, the, the previous governments did, did not um, do anything with it, um, and as a national, uh, as our national party, and everybody knows the hard-working um, MPs in the national party, the Honourable Anne Tolley rolled her sleeves up and got going with it. I also want to acknowledge another um, key figure in our party um, that has left, and that's the Honourable Bill English. And why do I mention um, the Honourable Bill English? Is because it was Bill's dream around social investment. And the, and the government can sit there and they can chuckle away about this, but he saw the need, he got the information, he researched the information, he put together what would best be um, a good approach to... To, ident to the identification of some of the issues that um, he found and here to bore the social investment policy and the social investment agency. It was the first time in the history of this, government's, um, of this government uh, um, throughout the ages that social investment was brought to the fore in a way to be ahead of the issues to support the people that need it and this is what the Honourable uh, Sir Bill English did. And so I just want to make, um, make a, um, a call out, a shout out to the um, Honourable Bill English. Now, everyone thinks that the Labour, Labour government is, is, is a government for the people. Well, it's not. And I will say why it is not. Number one, number one, the biggest thing that um, people tend to forget that when National was in government, it was the National-led government that actually gave the beneficiaries of this country their first pay increase. The first time in over 30 years. And they say that National is not a party for the people. Well, it is. Labour is not. Labour cannot get there. It cannot get there without their other two part coalition partners. Whereas National didn't need to do that. We gave also, under the national-led government, we gave tax breaks, not just for business, but for all workers. Every single worker that earned money, that, that were taxed, got a break. They got a break so they could be part and parcel of the growing economy, um, Madam Chair. I just encourage we, the member to stay close, closer to the bill at hand rather yep, than I'm to other just policy. Getting thank there. you. Yep, yep, thank you. Thank you for that. And and the hard work that parents put into raising their children, especially sole parents, I was a sole parent, to, be, to eliminate one of those parents out of the raising of their children, that's not working for the people. That is not working for the people. In the bill, that's why this side of the House argued that particular area of the SOP, that both parents would be acknowledged equally with payments from a benefit over the sole, pe sole parent benefits. And they did not. They are not acknowledged in this bill, Madam Chair. Foster parents were also penalised in this particular bill. We've heard it through the um, Honourable Alfred Ngaro, uh, Honourable Louise Upston, my colleagues that have spoken. We look at putting... So the government decided to put the orphan's benefit and the unsupported children's benefit together i.e. penalising foster parents, making it harder for foster parents. We need foster parents, they're part and parcel of our society, they make up our society, but when we go and penalise them, then who wants to do that? The name change from the emergency benefit to the exceptional circumstances benefit, that just opens up a whole area that people will be eliminated or will be um, against them actually getting that emergency benefit. It wasn't a policy neutral um, uh, bill, Ms. Uh, Madam Speaker. The winter payment is a policy. It is a government policy. It should never have been in the sections, and it is not a policy, Madam um, Speaker. My mother said to me, hey girl, guess what? I've got some money for winter payment. And I said, that's right, dear, and you'll only get it up for a certain time and then it goes. And she said, well, I didn't know that. 
She said, I didn't know that, so how did I get it, and when does it end, and will I know? All of these questions were never told to her over these winter payment um, issues. So, you know, these are some of the things that have actually come out. That, that the explanations are supposed to be a policy neutral bill, and it is not. Open and transparent government, it was a bad start for the government, wasn't it? A very I bad start. I apologise to the member, your time has expired. Thank you. Well uh, Madam Speaker. I call Priyanka Radhakrishnan. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, I rise to take a call on the Social Security.